All right. Welcome back to Blue Collar Homestead. Well, today we're going to do something a little different. Homesteading isn't only about gardening and uh, animals and, you know, self-sustainability, but we're going to throw some auto mechanic stuff in there too because I'm a firm believer if I can do it myself, I never call the guy. You know what I mean? So what we got to do right now is the temperature sensor on the Lincoln has gone bad. The gauge is bouncing all over the place. And they put it in a really goofy spot. It's There's two of them. There's one on top of the intake, and the other one is under the intake, like right next to uh, cylinder number five. And very difficult to get to. So, that being said, I tried a regular box end wrench. I tried a socket with a bunch of swivels. I tried one of these guys. And basically, I couldn't get any, anything in there to get it loose and get it out. So, I've come up with a little homestead ingenuity. And, you know, the Taiwan Tool Company and the Harbor Freight uh, Titanium Flux Core Welder kind of saved the day. So, what I ended up doing was taking a three-quarter wrench, this one, and I cut that end off. But first, before I cut that off, I welded a socket to it. So, let me show you what's going on here. You can see this is my three-quarter wrench. And I welded this socket to it. Now, the reason this will work is because this is nice and rounded and kind of thin. This actually works. I got it in there. I got this, uh, you know, I had to put a swivel on this, but I got it in there. So, yeah, don't mind the welds. I am not a professional welder. But, you know, the cheap Chinese tools... That's what they're good for. They're good for this kind of thing, dude. I'm not going to cut up a, you know, an expensive wrench to make some kind of, a, you know, makeshift tool to get something done. Cut up the cheap stuff. Cut it up and weld to it and whatever. Grind on it, hack it, whatever. You know what? Because some of the stuff on the internet was actually saying that uh, you had to remove the intake manifold to get that thing out. And I was not looking forward to that kind of thing. So, I came up with this guy instead. So if you're a little bit handy and you got a grinder and a welder and some tools, this guy works. Let me go put it on there and I'll kind of zoom in and you can see what's going on. But uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan of making jobs a lot, a lot harder than they have to be. So I will cut and grind a, a $5 tool to save myself a whole bunch of aggravation and time. So uh, let me get this thing on there and I'll get the camera and uh, we'll show you how it works actually and what's going on with it. All right, let's have a gander here. All right, you can kind of see what's going on here. I got my ratchet, my extension. It's kind of hard to see down in there. Let me give you some light, but you can see the sensor right there. And you can see where the, the tool I made is in there. Now, nothing else would fit in there. The sockets were too long. You know, that claw, I don't know what they call that, a cat's paw or a bird claw or whatever they call it, but that wouldn't fit in there either. It was rubbing on the side of the intake, man, or the, the cylinder head, actually, but... uh. This definitely works to get this out. So if you ever run across this on the, uh, the Lincoln Town Car, probably on the Town Car, the Crown Vic, the uh, Grand Marquis, they're all probably going to be about the same. But I guess this is a common problem with these. But that's the tool you got to make if you want to save yourself a few, a few minutes. So um, I did not go get the part yet. I had to order it. It should be here today. So I loosened that up, but I didn't totally pull it out yet because I know when I pull that out, I'm going to lose a ton of antifreeze and whatnot. I just wanted to see if I could actually get to it and not make a huge disaster out of it. But uh, I'm going to go pick that part up at some point and then uh, throw it on there. And hopefully that fixes the problem with the gauge jumping around. Hopefully it's not the cluster. But uh, All right. the part that I got yesterday ended up being the wrong part. So finally got the right part. This guy. I did get it out of there. I did not lose any antifreeze for some reason. Nothing came out of that hole. So I don't know if there's like, this doesn't sit in a coolant passage or something. I'm not sure, but uh, whatever. This has got to get put back in there. So let me get the camera flipped around and show you what's going on. All right. I don't know if you can see right there. Right there is where that sensor's got to go. When I back this out of here, you see that's way underneath there. But uh, it's going to be kind of hard for me to hold the camera and screw this in there at the same time. 
So I'm gonna put the camera down for a minute, get this screwed in there, get the tool in there, and you guys can see exactly how it works. All right, you can kind of see what's going on in there. I gotta pick this up. Now, the only part about this tool, if you can see that, I mean, I gotta put a ratchet on here and then spin that. Obviously, I'll have to pick it up off of there and then, you know, do one of those little eighth of an eighth of a turn things. But it's still better than taking the whole intake off. But you can see this tool. I mean, it definitely does what it needs to do in there. You just can't get that much of a spin on it. So let me get this tightened up and get everything back together and see how this works. This should fix all of our problems. All right, you can see sensors back in the plug is right in there it's nice and tight now the only thing that baffles me a little bit is this here is you know some piece of plastic like under the intake manifold you see this foam right here this thing is like super brittle i think it's just from all the heat you know building up in there and the car being almost 20 years old but I don't know what exactly that's in there for, but hopefully it's nothing too crazy. But, uh, well, let me get the rest of this put back together. Got to get the alternator put back on, get everything buttoned up, start this thing up, and see what it does. All right. You can see we got everything back together, except for the cover. There's a cover that goes on there, but, you know, I want to make sure that there's no leaks over here or anywhere because we just cracked the cooling system open. But now, I think we're going to start this thing and uh, see what it does. Like I said, I mean, yeah, these, these aren't the prettiest welds. I'm not a welder by any means, but uh, that's what you got to make if you want to avoid taking the intake manifold off. All right, let's see what this thing does. We're going to start it up and keep an eye on the temperature for a few minutes. I'll probably let it run for about a half hour. I might even drive it somewhere. But before when I would start it up, this gauge, yeah, you can see it now, but it would only go, it would go like up to halfway, like immediately. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna behave now. So the battery's been disconnected overnight, so it's kinda gonna have to reread everything. Yeah. 0, 0.0 miles. Yeah, that just zeroed everything out. Let's uh I don't know, distance still empty, that's better. Alright, well, I think that's gonna be it for this. So alright. It's looking like that's gonna be it. You know, the car's back there, car's running, warming up. I'm gonna let it get up to temperature, make sure there's no leaks or whatever. Throw that cover back on top of the engine. And hopefully that'll be it for this car for a while. You know, I've had this car, I don't know, about a year and a half now. I haven't really had to do a whole lot to it, but uh, it is getting older, it's almost 20 years old. That's, uh, well, actually, no, now it is 20 years old. It's 2023, that car's a 2003, but uh, it's still a good car, so. You know, like, subscribe, and share, and we will see you on the next video.